G'day and welcome to Barney's Daily Devotionals. We're looking at 2 Peter over the next little while and getting into what God has given us and how great he is in the midst of a world where there's opposition to Christianity, there's catcalling and name calling and, and worse in terms of persecution around the world. How do we stand firm where, when people are saying, where is this coming? You know, Jesus is supposed to be coming back. It's been 2,000 years. You know, and they thought it was going to be in their lifetime, but we're still here and maybe it's all nonsense. And, and what do we do when the church is infested with false teaching? People that worm their way in for various reasons. Some are just deceived. Others are deliberately deceiving. Uh, some are coming out of uh, thinking they could get rich uh, to have power trips or do all sorts of things. How do we live as godly people and uh, trusting the Lord Jesus and, and how do we move on and, and get ahead uh, serving him in this life? That's the kind of issues that 2 Peter brings up and he starts with uh, a great boost of confidence for us in our Christian faith in spite of all that might be going on for us personally or in the church or in the world there are there is something that we need to know to give us confidence in this life why don't we pray and we'll get into God's word father please uh, be with us now as we come to your word and open it up we pray that you will speak to our hearts and uh, give us the confidence that we need to face a world of trouble and uh, a life of trouble and sometimes a church in trouble uh, help us to know where you are in the midst of it all and also what uh, what might help us to keep going in Jesus name we pray amen so we're in 2 Peter chapter 1 and we pick it up at verse 1 Simeon Peter a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have received a faith equal to ours through the righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus, our Lord. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that's in the world because of evil desire. We'll stop there and we'll pick it up tomorrow from, uh, as he goes on to say, well, how do you enact this? But uh, notice a few things that are there. It's, it's written for our encouragement and strengthening. Uh, it's from Simeon Peter, and you think, well, that's a bit different. Is that the same as Simon Peter? And yes, uh, I was discussing with a, 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 a group of people investigating Christianity, the fact that the various people in the Bible go by different names. As Saul becomes Paul, uh, Simon, uh, is called Peter by Jesus. He's known as Cephas, which is just uh, this, uh, Peter in a different language as well. And so it gets a bit confusing, but this is the same Simon Peter. It's the servant and an apostle of Christ Jesus. Uh, he, is, uh, he understands his position in the world, both in terms of uh, I, you know, he's, he's under a master, that Jesus is Lord, as we all should, but also that he has a special place in it as one of those that Jesus uh, was a witness to Jesus and was sent out. And we, we read about the requirements of being an apostle at the start of uh, the book of Acts uh, as they go to find a 12th one to replace Judas. But Peter is one of the apostles. He's an apostle of Jesus Christ. The word apostle means he sent sent from he's a he's the envoy the messenger of jesus christ sent with to do jesus mission uh, and he's writing to those who've received a faith equal to ours uh, through the righteousness of our god and savior jesus christ notice a couple of things how how great is it that that even the a christian two thousand years later or in the the worst possible position in the world those who know and love the lord jesus have a faith equal to that of the apostles, right? They don't have more faith because they saw him than what we have. It's equal and we're all regarded as children of God, uh, called by him and that we've been discussing in church on Sundays, Matthew, the last couple of weeks and particularly who's great in the kingdom of uh, God. That's what the 
the disciples who become the apostles come and ask Jesus. And in the end, Jesus says, well, uh, the one who wants to be great among you, it just has to be in. And to do that, you've got to be humble like a little child. And we, we've thought through the, the implications of that. And I really encourage you, if you haven't seen those uh, last two churches, to go back and look at the marks of greatness. But, but notice that, that to be great in the kingdom and the greatest in the kingdom, you've just got to be in it, right? You've got to, this is a faith that's equal to that of the apostles. And how does that faith come? It comes through the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Notice again that Jesus is called God. Uh, he is God become man. He's our God and Saviour. In uh, Titus chapter 2, we saw a little while ago that we're waiting for the appearance of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And so he's writing to Christian brothers and sisters who he doesn't stand, in one sense, he's, he's Jesus missionary to them and one sent with the authoritative message, but he regards them as equal in the kingdom, as a fellow, uh, fellow believers and so on. And what is he after? Well, he prays, verse 2, may grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. What does this apostle want for his brothers and sisters for those who've received this faith equal to his own, he wants God's grace and God's peace to, um, to exponentially be growing in their life. That grace and mercy of God, that's the grace. Uh, we thought before about how you, you could um, take it as an acronym to understand what it means, that it's God's riches at Christ's expense. That's what grace is. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. Jesus has poured out his love for us as we've looked through the the different shadows of the cross and what jesus would come into you can see how powerful and gracious he is that he would be a sin offering for it that he would be our substitute he would be our passover lamb he would be the one to open a fountain uh, that would cleanse uh, from sin and iniquity and 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 just how wonderful is the grace of our lord jesus and Peter is praying in that little prayer in verse 2 that that grace might just overflow and abound, but also the peace might be multiplied in us as well. That uh, peace that we know that we are not at war anymore with our maker, that we are reconciled with him and that that peace should overflow into our way of dealing with the world and each other, even as we, we look at the kind of the suffering and the opposition and the false teaching and the cat calling that's going to go on that's always present in this world while ever Jesus has not returned. How is it we can go on in grace and peace? Well, uh, we're going to find out. Verse 3 then is uh, what the key of what we want to look at today. 3 and 4. God's power has given us everything required for life and godliness. That is, there is nothing that hasn't been given that we need to, to get on living for God and being godly than what has already been given to us. That's a wonderful thing that we have already everything that we need. How has that been given? Well, it's been given through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. How is it that we have everything we need for life and godliness in face of a messy world and a messy life and a messy church? Well, because of our knowledge of him, that is, he has given us instruction. And I take it Peter, um, at the very least, has in mind that we have the scriptures. We have this knowledge of God. This is his word to us. Uh, now, in his case, I mean, he has personal testimony as the apostle of Jesus uh, going around and helping people come to Christ and start churches. And so uh, there's, a, uh, there, there's other ways that the word of God comes to us, but this is the sure and authoritative uh, version of it by which we know God. This is how God speaks. We know him. We know what he says. And so that's why we have everything required for life and godliness, because the Bible's not unaware of situations. Uh, there's almost, there may be things in life that happen to us like, um, that, that aren't uh, pictured in the Bible, like you might have an abseiling accident or uh, uh, you know, 
um, there might be a car crash and cars and abseiling aren't mentioned in the Bible as such, but accidents are and injuries and the circumstances of life, the bad relationships, the evil that's done to us, the injustices and so on. Every sort of situation in life is God has given us how to handle it. Uh, and we know how to handle it through our knowledge of him, because knowing who he is, knowing what he says, knowing what he's like. And in particular, that he has called us by his own glory and goodness. God is so great and good and kind and wonderful. Uh, and we know that. And we know that we've been called to him, to join with him, to be part of his family and kingdom. And he goes on to say, by these he's given us very great and precious promises, so that through them you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruptions in the world because of evil desire. This knowledge of God and of his greatness, his glory and uh, goodness, um, because of those, he's contained in it all in his delivery to us and equipping us with everything are these great and precious promises that the Bible is filled with, that the gospel is filled with, uh, promises of uh, life with God in his kingdom forever, promises that God has provided everything we need, promises that he's with us, promises that nothing can... Uh, pull us away from him that nothing can take away his love for us and you think of Romans chapter 8 promises to do with the fact that dark times they mean that God has abandoned us but in fact that he's working through us as we're going to see uh, in tomorrow's devotion as Peter moves on well they are great promises they are precious promises there's nothing more valuable than them what could you give in return for the assurance of all of those things? Nothing. But by these, he's given us these great and precious promises so that through them we may share in the divine nature. Now, that, that uh, some have taken that to mean that somehow we become little gods ourselves, that we're somehow we are divine and that we're somehow caught up into, into the universal God as if we're, uh, we're a form of Hinduism or something like that. Uh, but that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about how God's character comes to be with us. And we do get to participate in the divine nature. It's the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in our life, helping us understand and appreciate the precious promises, molding and shaping our life. That we, we share in the life of God. And because of that, it helps us to escape the corruption that's in the world because of evil sky. Not escape it in the sense of it doesn't affect us and it never impacts us, but we can escape ourselves from the sinfulness of, of participating in ourselves. There is always a way to honor God, to live this life of obedience and righteousness, of godliness that's pleasing to our great God and Father who's given us his great and precious promises. And so at the outset, as Paul, as or as Peter prays for us that grace and peace be multiplied, how does it come? It comes through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So boiling that down just from the outset, what is it that we're going to need to go on loving God, serving God, uh, plowing on as Christians in this world of corruption and of violence and of opposition and of where things happen that you know, make us distraught. Well, it's God's great and precious promises. It's it's knowing Him. It's it's getting into what He says. And so, at the very outset, I want to say that um, the Bible is not just God's authoritative word, but it's God's good word for us to help us in all these matters. It is authoritative. God knows what he's talking about, but it's there as a benefit to us. God has given us his book in order to grow and go on and be strong and to honor him and, and flourish in our faith. And so get stuck into it. Uh, whether you watch these daily devotions or, or not, you know, I want to encourage you to, to just get stuck into the Word, to keep growing, because by these, God's giving you everything that you need. He's giving me everything that I need to keep going in this world. God has not neglected us. God is wonderful, and He has provided for us everything we need. His divine power has given us everything required for life 
and for godliness. For a life that goes on into eternity, it comes through his word. And for godliness in this world, we know what God requires, but also how he equips us and shapes us and these provisions for us in order to make that happen. And we're going to see some of those as we go on. And so be... Um, even if you're in a very dark situation or you, you look at the world and think it's very dark, uh, how can I possibly go on with Christ? Well, you can go on through knowing him, through his word, through his great and precious promises. And it's a wonderful thing that God has given us. And don't, don't uh, abandon it. Uh, don't distrust his word. Go with it. Love him and love what he's given you. And have every confidence that you've been given enough to keep going in each and every situation. Why don't we pray? Father, we want to thank you for your power, might, your love, your greatness, your goodness. That you've given us in the Lord Jesus uh, overwhelming grace. And we pray that grace might be multiplied so that peace might be multiplied in us. Thank you for the relationship we have with you. And thank you that you've given us everything we need for life and for godliness because you have given us a sure knowledge of yourself through your word, through your son, as the gospels come to us through other people. And we pray, please, that we would anchor ourselves on your word. Help us to get into it, to love it, and to know that everything that we need for living for you and for life eternal is there, and that you have not abandoned us, and you are not unaware of the situations of this world. And so we pray as we deal with our own personal darknesses with our own sin with uh, the way other people have hurt us with false teaching with the name calling and opposition from the world that we would stand firm knowing your great word and knowing even more that you, the, you the great and wonderful god behind us who gives that word in jesus name we pray amen god bless everyone catch you for another devotion tomorrow